Hey everyone, it's the patient toddler coming at you with another part of my video series regarding the value of the Ecomi token if it is worth investing. And in this one, we are going to focus especially on the Ecomi token burn mechanics and see what is necessary to reduce the Ecomi token supply. But before we start, please keep in mind that I'm a crypto and NFT investor and not a financial advisor. So please do your own research before you ape into the Ecomi token. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, please consider dropping a like, subscribe to my channel and let me know what you think about the burn mechanics and this video series in the comments below. Tap the bell to always get notified whenever I upload a video, a new part of this video series or start a live stream. All of this is a free way of supporting this channel. Doesn't cost anything. If you want to do more than that, you can become a channel member or a Patreon to my channel and therefore a rare hodler. And at this point, I want to thank my rare hodlers, my Patreons for always supporting me and my journey and making those videos possible. Now with that out of the way, let's jump right into the video. This is part two of the video series that ultimately leads up to answering the question whether it is a good idea to invest in the Ecomi token or not and which could be a price prediction for the bull run after the next Bitcoin halving which occurs in May 2024 and will then probably result in a run up by the end of 2024 or beginning of 2025. For your overview of this video series, part one discusses how Ecomi gets value. If you haven't seen it yet, go back to part one and watch that one first. And I will also enable a playlist on my account where you can watch all the parts that are out already. Part two discusses the burn mechanics. That's the part that you are watching at the moment. Part three was recently added to the plan and I will analyze and list the major concerns with this project. Part four will discuss the availability of the Ecomi token. Part five will outline lockups, staking and passive income. Part six will be about the development of the market segment and the final part number seven will outline the path to mass adoption and include a long term and long awaited price prediction for the Ecomi token for the coming bull run. A cryptocurrency such as the Ecomi token that holds value can increase in price once it has finite token supply. In those cases, a deflationary token supply can act as a boosting factor as we have seen with other deflationary tokens like Ethereum in the previous years. As outlined in part one of this video series, only value can give the fuel to price increases, but a deflationary supply will lead to explosive moves to the upside once the first supply and demand shock happens. We have also discussed in the previous part that the utility for the OMI token is today almost zero besides utilization as a currency on the IMX marketplace and some minor marketplaces in that very ecosystem. Therefore, the only price increases for the moment are speculative reactions to the overall dynamic of the crypto space and even broader macroeconomical situation. One thing is very important. Please keep at all moments in mind with everything that is said here that the effects outlined will only impact the token price once certain milestones are achieved. These are most importantly the implementation of the OMI utility program and with that Ecomi to NFT on the VV app and other NFT marketplaces. The listing of the Ecomi token on most major and not major exchanges. The implementation of cash out functionalities such as MTL and crypto cash out to reinstate the trust of token investors in the VV team, which is mainly also the Ecomi team and obviously the onboarding of projects to the Ecomi token. If you have not seen the previous video, then I 
suggest that you start there. Before we dive into the exact breakdown of how the Ecomi token burn mechanics work, we need to take a short look at the history of deflationary assets and scarce goods in general. A scarce good is a good that has more quantity demanded than quantity supplied at a price point of zero dollars, which means just because your little cousins want to play with sand, that doesn't mean that sand is scarce when they are filling up their buckets. A good that normally is not scarce can become scarce quickly once the supply suddenly plummets. Think of the Great Famine in Ireland between 1845 and 1895 causing mass exodus for millions. There was just not enough food for everyone to stay alive. Again, this is not a history channel and I will not digress too much from the topic, but I feel this is very important. On the other hand, there are goods with a finite supply that are proven originals of which the total supply has decreased as many items weathered away. A good example here is Marvel Comics number one. This one did originally cost only a couple of cents at the newspaper seller, same as with many collectible items of the future, today no one cares about owning them. If you see all those played and worn out Pokemon cards, you might want to cry knowing what these are worth today. Marvel Comics number one finally reached a point where only a couple of editions remained in good conditions and it became a highly collectible item. Suddenly, the demand was way higher than the supply and the original cannot be resupplied. It therefore has a finite supply and part of its circulating supply was so to say burned away. But just because something is deflationary, it does not make it necessarily worth spending a dime. Now the other side, a container full of rotten flesh, you know, failed aggregate and a lot of sunlight. If I would start burning the rotten flesh pile, it would become scarcer and scarcer, but the price point would be still zero because no one wants it. Just like the Electra collectible on the VV app. Anyways, this is how scarcity interferes with the value proposition of a good and the intrinsic value it has. Water, for example, seems like an abundant good. It covers 75% of the face of the earth and yet people die in consequence of lacking fresh and drinkable water. The important question with Omi is now, are we burning Lamborghinis or rotten flesh? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the juicy part of this video and that is everything that will burn away Ecomi from the total supply and from the circulating supply. But let's start out with a quick look at the supply again so we are all at the same page. I will spare myself the work to create my own graphic for this one so I will use the pie chart of the homie Pudding Cheeks, all credits to him. As you can see, everything in red colors is the non-circulating supply and everything in blue colors is the circulating supply. Orange color are the tokens that are forever lost in the smart contract accidents. Only the light blue part is the theoretically available supply on the exchanges for you and me to ape into. Besides the value creation, we want to see the light blue and in general, the blue part to be burned away. The light blue segment also includes the founder and ex-founder wallets. The biggest token burner so far is the VV app. It holds three wallets, the reserve wallet, the vault wallet, and the burn wallet. Once you load up gems to the VV app, a part of the Ecomi tokens are being moved from the reserve wallet into the vault wallet. But how much? A gem is always packed to $1 and also needs to move inside the system with the equivalent amount of OMI tokens. Let's do the easy math. If you load 100 gems at a price point of 0 0.001 OMI, for each gem, 1000 OMI are moved out of the reserve wallet into the vault wallet. For imaginatory purposes, you would say the gem is forged out of 1000 OMI. One gem is forged 
out of 1000 Omi. Good. I have 100,000 Omi forged into 100 gems now and the gems are in the app and available for me to either participate in drops or buy something on the secondary market. Let's say you are taking your 100 gems and participate in a drop for 60 gems, Disney golden moments or whatever. That represents a direct sale for Vivi and therefore a cash out of the 60 gems used. Whenever we purchase something on a drop in the store, 100% of the gems are being cashed out to Vivi. And this results every time in 100% burn of the 60,000 OMI tokens forged into those gems. 1,000 for each gem at the current price. These 60,000 OMI tokens are now moving from the Vault Wallet into the burn wallet. Okay, now we have wasted 60 gems on a drop that got us a high mint common and we came to realize that we can use our remaining 40 gems to grab a better mint or rarity from the market. Great, so let's ape those gems away. Purchase made and because it's Disney we have a 6% licensor fee to them and 2.5% fee to Vivi. These are a total of 8 0.5% cash out for the external parties. This would be 3.4 gems subject to a cash out and therefore another 3,400 OMI moves from the vault wallet. With every transaction, more gems are going into the pocket of Vivi and the licensors and more OMI moves to the burn wallet. Obviously, this effect would be lower if the price of the Okomi token was to rise, for example, to 0.002. Then we would have half of the Omi moving to the burn wallet. Great so far, but before we move on, you would probably say, but patient hodler, who cares if Omi moves from one wallet to another if it's already out of circulation? Damn right, my fellow DGEN investor, this is a critical point. I will make this short. In the beginning, Vivi planned to take a part of the revenue and buy Ecomi from the market to then put it into the reserve wallet. The thought was good but probably flawed in several ways. Remember when I said that a gem always needs to be forged out of as many Ecomi tokens as you need to have one dollar? Right, so let's say they would really take a billion tokens out of circulation into the reserve wallet. People would see it, figure that the token supply is decreasing massively and buy as much as they can. The price skyrockets to one cent and suddenly only 100 instead of 1000 OMI are needed per gem. Awesome, but the problem is now people see that the burns are cut to 10% of what it was before, so they would figure it might take 10 years to burn through the reserve. Sound familiar? So they would take profit, the price drops, the burns go up again and people buy again. So both sides would keep each other in check but slowly increasing the price. And if buybacks were in place and the price would move in accordance with the Ecomi token, then obviously replenishing the reserve wallet would result in Vivi having to spend all their gains, all their revenue onto replenishing the reserve wallet. And with that, they wouldn't have extra money to build out new features, the Viviverse and other stuff that we highly desire to increase our burns and increase the value of the underpinning token. So with that, Either this buyback would be really, really small, almost non-existent, or they would destroy their own business model by executing. The biggest flaw in the system are regulatory issues, but these will be discussed at a later point in the video part three. One probable consequence of this is the splitting of Ecomi and Vivi in two different legal entities held by Orbis. Part of the solution is that Ecomi cannot use money to refill the reserve wallet, but there are other methods. I have split up all those burn mechanics into the different projects and categories so we don't lose the focus. Indian storytelling orient tower defense game in the style of Clash Royale with the name Epico Regal 
which also has a marketplace to purchase several in-game items, will use Ecomi. These items include in-game gold, loot boxes and NFTs. The game will come with its own token, which gives holders special benefits and is only purchasable with the Ecomi tokens. Besides their play to earn oriented leaderboard system, a share of 10% of the Ecomi tokens spent in the Epico shop will be moved to the Vivi reserve wallet. 10% of all tokens spent in Epico will be moved to the Vivi reserve wallet. Therefore, it is a two step burn mechanic which in step one removes Omi from the circulating supply and step two lets it burn in the VV app via the previously described process. The Omi will be transferred once per quarter. It is necessary to point out that this mechanic has not been implemented yet, which means from the time of official implementation, it will take another three months until the first Ecomi tokens from Epico end up in the Vivi reserve wallet. There is another problematic factor I see here, which is the necessity to bridge Ecomi tokens over to Polygon to be able to purchase in-game items and NFTs with Ecomi tokens. This creates a natural barrier of complexity. Most people have not enough knowledge in the crypto space to execute such transactions. This is the very reason why Vivi has implemented the gem dynamic into the app. The next project we are going to look at is Fiches and the Fiche Arena. Developed as an NFT project by the Omi Homi Brockmac blockchain, Fiches is a project where unique NFT Fiche are living in a digital customizable Fiche tank. Besides the fun Fiche tanks, unique lore and other features, this project also has a play to earn battleground which allows Fish owners to beat the crap out of Fishes in robotic battlesuits. The play to earn mechanics shall be part of another video. Let's take a look at the play to burn aspect of this game. 50% of the Omi spent in all ranked matches will be burned at the end of the match. This is interesting because you do not need to own a Fish to play a match. You only have to pay for it with a little bit of Omi tokens. Second. Wager matches let fish owners put down a pot to battle for, of which 90% will be sent to the winner. 5% will go into the monthly prize pool and 5% will be burned. Third, by buying fun points, you can basically get the right to comment on an ongoing match and either cheer for a party or harass them. 50% of the OMI token spent on fun points will be burned. The project uses the same mechanic as Epico Regal and therefore sends the Ecomi tokens to the reserve wallet where they are subject to the previously outlined burn mechanic. As a last point to the Fiches project, it is worth noting that the arena is currently in beta and only Fiche holders can play for the moment and it is necessary to first connect with the Immutable X blockchain to enable the transactions even if you are not planning to use Ecomi tokens at all. Same as for the previous project, needless to say that the normal mom and pop user will be unable to access this game for blockchain nerds only. Shout out to Brock McBlockchain for this awesome project. The next one on my list is Cannon Crisis Shoot to Burn. This is a mini game where you have to shoot at a target with a cannon that is shielded by a spinning obstacle. If you miss, you lose a try. To regain tries or improve speed, you can watch advertisements. The Ecomi token is then pulled from the circulating supply and is sent to the wallet with the following address, says Curtis M. Cooper, the creator of Canon Crisis. If you want to participate in the game, you can download it for free in the Apple and Android app stores. We should note here that this is the only project so far that instantly burns from the circulating supply already. Cooper states on Twitter that his game had removed over 550,000 Omi from the circulating supply over the last month, which is an average burn 
of 18,300 OMI tokens per day. Next on my list is the ECOMI utility program itself. The OMI utility program is a work in progress, a first concept. The information given is an initial outline of the various elements in the OMI utility program. It is clear so far that there are various staking tiers where stakers get benefits if they stake the ECOMI token within the VV wallet. This has nothing to do with the staking offered by Ascendex right now. Once you lock up your tokens, you have to wait a certain staking period of 30, 60 or even 90 days to get the benefits of a certain tier and move to the next tier. Three burn mechanics come into play. First of all, fast tracking the staking period. Impatient hodlers can move directly to the next staking tier if they are accepting a 25% burn or slashing of their staked OMI token. For example, if you want to get the rewards of staking tier 1 instantly, you need to lock $1000 worth of OMI, which at the current price point is 1 million OMI tokens and accept that 250,000 will be moved to the burn wallet. As for now, Staking tier 3 is granted at a $10,000 lockup, which would then be 2.5 million ECOMI tokens burned to complete it instantly. We have already heard that there are tiers 4 and 5 planned, which could offer $25,000 and $50,000 lockups. Not only will you have a significant lockup period, but also imagine the burns at a bear market price like these. Obviously, those instant completions will be a no-brainer for all Ecomi whales as it opens up the playground to massive whale games within the VV app and they want to be the first to use them. Flexing with low mint numbers in showrooms, burning away entire collectible stacks, enjoying expanded AR features and most importantly, renting collectibles. Another significant factor is the reduced buyer fees when buying collectibles with OMI tokens. Yes, you heard right, lock up OMI to purchase collectibles with OMI. The second dynamic is a so-called breakage fee. Imagine staking tier three, which is a 90 day period and now the conditions are changing. This could be anything. A massive bull run that brings OMI all the way up to the moon. Uh, what do I say to the Mars or even to Cavell Anderson's exoplanet of $10 OMI. Then you might sacrifice the 10% breakage fee to move these tokens to an exchange and take some juicy profits. This burn fee is lower as you are not going to complete the tier and you will not achieve the benefits of this specific tier. In that case, no mint flexing for you. Hashtag hide the pain hodler. Anyways, the third and final mechanic is a buyer's fee when purchasing collectibles that are listed for OMI tokens. The seller's fees that we already know of 2.5% to 8.5% as mentioned before are to be paid in gems, which means they are causing still burns from the reserve wallet and not from the circulating supply. However, the buyer needs to contribute a small fee of 0.5% in tier two or 0.25% when completed tier three of the total selling price of the collectible in OMI tokens, which are directly moved to the burn wallet, thus reducing the overall price of the ECOMI token. Also here, we need to remember that this is a mere promise and has not been implemented and therefore no tokens have been burned so far by these mechanics. Also, we have to keep in mind that with a rising ECOMI price, also the amount of OMI that is necessary to stake within those tiers is lower because 1000, 5000, $10,000 are easier to achieve with a higher ECOMI price. On the flip side, this will also enable smaller holders with the time to stake their OMI in the OMI utility program as the value of their holdings suddenly might enable them to go to another tier. And that, ladies and gentlemen, are all the burn mechanics that we know of so far. So let's get to some final thoughts here. 
we have seen that the dynamic around the Ecomi token is increasing. Community projects start burning Ecomi tokens and many mechanics are still not rolled out. If they were to be executed in this manner, a rapid decline would be seen for the circulating supply of the Ecomi token, especially because many mechanics are bound to the dollar value of the total Ecomi and not to the amount of Omi itself. This means bear markets technically could burn the hell out of this token. And as outlined in the beginning of this video and in part one of this video series, it all depends on the value creation in combination with the burns. The burns are only a boosting factor such as TVL, total value locked, is only a boosting factor. There is no value added to a coin, a token or whatever other good just by burning it. Burning garbage does not increase the value of garbage. And with that, I am already at the end of this part of the Ecomi token analysis. Please let me know in the comments below if you like this type of content. What do you think about the different burn mechanics? Do you think we are burning Lamborghinis or are we burning garbage? And wherever you are on the world, have yourselves a great morning, evening, day, night or afternoon and see you in the next part of this video series.